Hello, welcome again to another session of Digital Slide Review, Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, which you can gain more access to by joining the Digital Pathology Association, a matter which is uh, free for residents and trainees and uh, fairly inexpensive for uh, practicing pathologists. So our case today comes from the realm of uh, thyroid pathology. As you may know, I've uh, begun working on a thyroid project. Uh, and our patient is a 63-year-old woman who has developed a thyroid mass. Uh, so at that age, uh, that's not the uh, typical age of uh, benign goiters. And uh, not surprisingly, the FNA uh, revealed features uh, suspicious for malignancy. Uh, and she was brought to uh, resection. Uh, on resection, she had uh, a tumor that looked uh, uh, like it was butting up against the uh, thyroid capsule or extending into soft tissue in a few areas um, and had a somewhat uh, floret uh, nodular appearance on low magnification. Uh, the surgeon did a surrounding soft tissue resection, but even then our margins are fairly close. Uh, as we look at this tumor, we see there's some sclerosis, some inflammation in portions of it. Um, and then we have this sort of winding, uh, serpiginous anastomosing uh, uh, glandular appearance to the, to the tissue. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of follicular structures, uh, certainly not much in the way of colloid. Uh, and as we look at these cells, we see many of them have uh, a fairly uh, columnar uh, type of uh, phenotype in areas. Uh, we can look around and we see a lot of uh, clearing of the uh, nuclear uh, spaces. Um, and uh, as we look at the nuclear features, certainly this sort of uh, empty uh, vacuolar or vacuous appearance to the uh, nuclei would be strongly suggestive of uh, thyroid papillary carcinoma. Um, and many of these nuclei are as well overlapping. Uh, so uh, what we don't see, however, are uh, uh, typical uh, papillary structures. Uh, we don't see any samoma bodies per se. We just see these long uh, serpiginous winding uh, channels uh, of uh, fairly elongated uh, structures. Um, and each of these uh, papillae or each of these elongated structures is lined by uh, stratified or slightly stratified epithelium. Uh, looking at this a little more closely, we can see that Although the nuclei uh, occupy a portion of it, uh, in many cases, uh, or at least in a uh, fair percentage of the, uh, of the cases, uh, the total cell size is uh, two, two and a half times as large as the nuclei. Not in all cells, but in a, a significant portion of them. Say, for example, this area here, uh, we see that. And uh, so once we get to an area where, you know, 20, 30, uh, or more percent of the tumor has uh, that type of configuration, we start to be concerned about uh, tall cell variant of uh, papillary carcinoma with these nuclear features. And here we see a nice uh, gland where there's lots of cytoplasm and it's pretty tall. Now we're not seeing really sharp uh, cell borders um, to uh, suggest uh, columnar cells. And we have certainly a lot of uh, nuclear inclusions here. Uh, which is also another feature. Here's another area where we've got nice tall cells, uh, more than two times as large as the nuclear structures. Uh, looking at uh, another section from a related but uh, different case, uh, we can see again uh, another feature of this uh, neoplasm uh, is that the cytoplasm can be quite oxophilic or quite uh, eosinophilic. Uh, almost like a uh, wart, excuse me, like a uh, uh, Herthel cell lesion. And here we can see again these uh, uh, tall cells with uh, two to three times the amount of cytoplasm uh, compared to the nucleus. Um, uh, this lesion also has some nuclear inclusions, not quite as pronounced or uh, as vacuous as the previous uh, slide that I showed you. And here we can see more uh, colloid type uh, tissue as well. But again, cells that are fairly tall uh, and have um, abundant uh, eosinophilic, slightly granular cytoplasm as a predominant feature, uh, this is a characteristic of tall cell uh, carcinoma of the thyroid. So what is the tall cell variant? 
Well, uh, by definition, it's greater than 30% of the uh, tumor is composed of tall cells with two to three times uh, as much uh, height as there is width. Uh, and abundant granular eosinophilic cytoplasm in association with the nuclear changes of papillary thyroid carcinoma. Now, these tumors most frequently have a BRAF B600E mutation. Um, and so if you've done that uh, molecular testing or you do it subsequently to that to guide treatment, uh, that will uh, become uh, evident. Now, the reason this is important is because these tumors tend to be more aggressive than classic uh, papillary thyroid carcinoma. Uh, and therefore, uh, an awareness of that, uh, an awareness of the maybe radiation resistance or other features that these lesions may have uh, is important. The differential diagnosis is going to include the columnar cell variant, uh, which does not have that same um, uh, two to three times the height uh, difference. Uh, oncocytic variants of papillary thyroid carcinoma, and you can see how that could enter into the differential as well as a Worthen-like variant, uh, which has uh, a lot of oxophilic cells, but also a uh, lymphoid uh, stroma. And then certain metastatic breast cancers can also appear similar to uh, this tall cell variant as well. Now, it is uh, not typical for us to need uh, immunohistochemistry, but if in, for some reason we begin to question whether or not a nodal lesion is metastatic lung cancer, and we do an napsin A, well, guess what? Tall cell carcinoma is gonna be positive with napsin A and TTF1, and therefore can easily masquerade in the wrong setting as a potentially metastatic lung cancer rather than the tall cell papillary carcinoma variant. So let's just take a quick look at an area uh, that we felt was uh, representative of the columnar cell variant. Um, and here we see that in this uh, particular area here. Uh, and we can see uh, that, again, the, the cells are um, a little bit on the tall side. They're not quite uh, two to three times. I mean, I think you got a lot of papillary fringe here on some of these, uh, but they're not quite that tall. And we don't have quite the same frequency of nuclear inclusions. We've got some, uh, but we don't have them quite as uh, cleared out as in our previous uh, the examined case. We can see some features, and certainly these are papillary carcinoma features, um, but uh, there are no papillary structures here, and we have this sort of columnar pattern, uh, but without the uh, really tall, two to three times as tall uh, kind of cytoplasmic uh, features. Uh, I mentioned the other uh, variant, uh, the Worthens variant, and here's a nice uh, representation of that uh, lesion. Uh, you can see here the a very evident uh, lymphoid stroma uh, right off the bat. And so you might wonder, is this an, you know, an adenolymphoma or an, uh, you know, lymphoepithelial lesion? But lo and behold, on high magnification, uh, we have fairly tall columnar cells, uh, uh, certainly a fair amount of cytoplasm in these, uh, and we've got nuclear features of papillary carcinoma along with this. So when we see lymphoid stroma and these uh, slightly enlarged cells, we would not call this tall cell carcinoma. We would call this the uh, Worthen-like uh, variant of uh, papillary carcinoma. And note here, the stroma is all lymphoplasmacytic cells. You can see a lot of them uh, here. Uh, so it can look a little bit like a uh, tall cell variant, uh, but with this lymphoid stroma, that uh, excludes it. So uh, that's... Uh, uh, it for the histology, this just reminds us that the management of thyroid carcinoma does depend heavily on the risk stratification, uh, either from uh, cytology or from surgical resection. Uh, these cases that are at intermediate or higher risk, uh, those are the patients where we're going to employ potentially radioactive iodine ablation or some combination of suppression or potentially even moving them on to some targeted therapy. Uh, based on either the presence of BRAF or RET mutations uh, or other uh, markers that may be indicators for targeted therapy. And so correctly stratifying these cases from the intermediate uh, classic types to the more high-risk tall cell variants uh, is of clinical uh, value uh, to the patient and to the oncologist. So our final sign-out for diagnosis for today is papillary thyroid carcinoma, the tall cell variant. 
we encourage you to come back and take a look at the digital slides when you get a chance uh, on your own time to study these a little bit more uh, in detail. I know that I've gone over them fairly quickly. Um, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, as always, we welcome your comments and uh, hope that you'll uh, comment on uh, challenging uh, thyroid cases you've dealt with. We certainly uh, invite you to subscribe, hit that little button there uh, so that you don't miss uh, future releases on our channel. And as always, uh, if you liked it, share it with your friends and colleagues who are in, uh, in a boat similar with you. Uh, so until next time, once again, thanks for joining us.